distractions when you was actually in school or whatnot. Distractions meaning um, something taking you away from your goals or whatnot when you was in school, taking you away from your purpose. Yes, I had a lot of distractions. But one um, in particular was um, I am married. I'm going through a separation divorce now because he was a distraction. Um, I think he did everything he could for me not to be successful, for me not to be able to make any money to take care of of our family basically basically is how I looked at it. like I'm doing this for us but um some of us ladies we get with these men who they don't see it like the way we see it they see it as if if she elevate then that means she's gonna be basically she's gonna be she gonna leave me or or she gonna be the breadwinner or I'm gonna have to rely on her or, or if she elevates she gonna be phenomenal and I'm gonna still be down here that I don't know where they get that mindset but uh yeah that's how they think so uh yeah he cheated I had a girl calling my school Trying to, I mean, it was like they was on the same team, like they was working together or something. Jesus Christ! Yeah, she was calling my school and making up lies and all type of stuff. And then it was, it was more than that. It was, I'm not gonna blame it all on him because I still, uh, I wasn't grown up yet. It was like I still was petty, so I still was entertaining yeah, what was going on around me. <laughs> exactly. Like I, I, it would, it would be moments where I wanted to go to the hall to get the phone call so I could argue or whatever or. Um, I would be late to school because I wanted to see what was going on with him or what, what he was doing if he was cheating or whatever. And it got to a point where I got stressed out and I got tired. Mm. And I'm like, I'm going to hold off on school for a second because I got a lot going on within just my marriage that I need to deal with. And, and he started making me feel like that I was abandoning my marriage. So mentally, I'm, I was just like, you know what, maybe, maybe I am. Maybe he's right. But then, I don't know, I went to sleep and woke up one day. I was like, nah, he got me messed up. I've been waiting on this. I'm getting older and older. This is what's going to take care of my kids. I have always wanted to do this. No, he, no we, we, we're not doing this. I think the last time that, um, I think when I got fed up was when um, somebody texted him. And it was just like, do, you know, on some do you love me? You still with her? And I, and I got tired. It's like, how long do you expect me to keep dealing with this? And it was interfering with my schoolwork, interfering with my homework, interfering with me, just me being great, interfering with my greatness. That's what it was interfering with. So that was just one obstacle. Like now I feel like <laughs> I, I can duck and dodge any obstacle, all obstacles, because I feel like I, in nursing school, I feel like you go through them all. Mm -hmm. So that was probably one of your um, busy, uh, um, not busiest, but um, um, worst obstacle. Well, damn, I can't even say it. Mm -hmm. One of the worst experiences that you had to go through in life to get to where you at right now. So it kind of like that was one of the worst, but it was one of them. Oh, so what's the worst? Yeah. It was uh, just me being a mom. I mean, um, not me. Me being a mom was not worse, but me feeling like I was abandoning my kids. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. I'm a, I'm a mom. Anybody knows me knows I give it that job title, position, whatever, a hundred percent of me. Mm -hmm. So me feeling like I was only giving it fifteen, only giving it fifty because I was working six to six. Uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. going to school at 8. Mm. That's how my schedule was. And sometimes I couldn't work at all because when you got three exams, um, two quiz, that, two quizzes that take your grade down 10%, like you're, you you face in the book. Mm -hmm. Like So I felt like uh, me having to pull from this way for my mom, pull from this way for my sisters, my brothers, rely on other people. Um, I think that for those 13 months that I had to uh, I wasn't the best mother that I could have been, and that is what bothered me the most. And when I graduated, I said I owe my kids 13 months that I have missed out with them. Mm. So. That, that's a that's a uh, good way to think about it too. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you uh, you made it through it and everything. That's that's kind of rough. <laughs> yeah, it's very rough. <laughs> very rough. Man, obstacles after obstacles. Man, you know, life is kind of uh, uh, trippy at times. Man. Mm -hmm. It seemed like once you get over one thing, and here come another exactly. thing. And definitely when you're in school or whatnot, you know, in school you got to be mentally focused. Yeah. Because these distractions can ruin your whole dang old career, dang near. Um, one little distraction from your uh, your marriage or your relationship can throw your 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 whole body yeah. out of balance. And they say, no, you, ain't, you think you're studying, but you're really not. You in the book, but your mind is yeah, somewhere else. Yeah, your mind is somewhere else. And right. they're saying, no, you know, you ain't scoring the right, you know, on your chest and everything. They say, no, you got problems. Mm -hmm. They say, no, you're behind. And you don't even know why. You're like, dang, well, what the heck is going on? And then you, you might fall into depression. That's another problem. I went through that, too, just because I felt like I had too much weight on my back. 
Mm. So even though, and I've had somebody tell me, when you sign up for this, it's, that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. Besides, we, we don't want to be, I mean, we don't never want to fail nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's like once you get in there and you feel like you're failing, that's not a good feeling. I think the reason why I've always been like ambitious or a go-getter is because I don't like the feeling of failing. Yeah, me either. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel good, so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about, since you said something about um, what you said earlier, let's talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, what about uh, mental health or whatnot? Because I know I'm, I talk to people all the time about mental health. And uh, and I think suicide is the wrong way to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know people get stressed. You know, they get worried about life. Yeah, life is hard. But um, you don't want to take your own life or whatnot. Right. Um, anytime you're depressed or whatnot, I think you should talk to somebody or you know, about your anxiety or whatnot. Uh, go see a therapist or whatnot. What's your take on um, mental illness? Um, I deal with mental illness myself. Um, I can say that we can we can all say don't take your life, don't take your life, but those people um, don't see it any other way. Mm -hmm. Like I think they feel like, and I can, I mean I, I'm only speaking from experience of what what it was when I went through it before, and it might not have been recent, but I felt like people were just talking at me, like you didn't understand. It was easier for you to say don't take your life because you didn't want to deal with basically me venting to you, or you didn't want to basically you don't want to think of nothing else to say. Um, I feel like those people get in that situation, they feel like they've exhausted all obstacles, basically all options. They've done everything. They tired of whatever they're going through. Nothing is helping it. And this is the only thing left to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say if you have somebody, you can't talk to everybody about what you go through. Um, some people are just, some people don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. They're judgmental. And even though you've talked to them, you feel like that they listen in, that they're caring at the moment, they run off and tell your business. They don't care, and that can, that's, that's also hindering as well to a person with mental illness because I always feel like if you're not helping, you're hindering. So find a good a person that's willing to listen to you, that's willing to help you through it, that's willing to check on you um, daily until you get through it. I mean, you might need a best friend, a close friend, and to me, longevity does not make them your friend. Um, you might be talking to somebody you consider to be your best friend, and really they're not helping you at all. So kind of find... Um, when I went through what I went through, my mama would tell me, go outside. You got one day to cry. And even now, she told me that years ago. So even now, that's, that sticks with me. When mm -hmm. I go through something, I always think about my mama saying, I'm going to give you one day to cry. Um, and then she'll call me like later that night or early that morning and say, I need you to get up and go outside. And breathe. And it would always, the sun would be shining. I need you to breathe that fresh air.